Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 24th of July and we are going to deal with one very important topic that is the hottest topic presently that is the budget of 2024-25. Nirmala Sitaraman tabled her 7th budget and by doing so she became the only finance minister in the history of India to table 7 consecutive budgets. She tabled 2 budgets in 2019, after that one budget each year. 2024 again she tabled two budgets. Murarji Desai was holding this record before her as he delivered or he tabled six budgets. This budget is investment friendly aiming at employment generation which was lagging according to many critics. It is aiming at spurring investments in multiple sectors. The space sector has got a boost, the research and development sector has got a boost. Most importantly states like Bihar and Andhra Pradesh who are important coalition partners, they have got increased allocation of funds for infrastructure development. The infrastructure investment amount set by the government in the interim budget 11,11,111 crore rupees remains the same, which is higher than last year's investment record. So, a lot to take from this budget, it simply depends on our perspective about it, on our viewpoint about it. So as UPSC aspirants, we need to have a balanced viewpoint on the budget. And we'll obviously come to the MCQ and we'll discuss the MCQs of yesterday. The budget 2024-25 was presented by Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs. She's holding that portfolio as well. Shri Nirmala Sitaraman in Parliament on 23rd of July 2024. This was our seventh consecutive budget. This is significant as it surpasses the record of six consecutive budgets presented by Morarji Desai. So, a record over here. By her, but yes, not so important for UPSC. But yes, it was mentioned by the Vice President of India, the Chairman of Rajya Sabha, Mr. Jagdeep Dhankar. That is why that has been included. Now, the constitutional provisions with respect to the budget, this should also be known. Now, in the constitution, there is mention about the budget and it is referred to as the annual financial statement over there. Article 112 deals with the annual financial statement. Budget is a statement covering estimated expenditure and receipts for the government of India in a financial year. Other than that, the budget contains estimated revenue, capital receipts, ways to increase revenue, details for receipts and expenditure. Like we did in yesterday's video, what are the government's expenditures, what are the government's receipts. Here we used the word capital receipts. Capital receipts are you know, those receipts which the government has received as loans. And by investing those receipts, government is expected to earn more money. That is also counted, the loans taken by the government, borrowings of the government. Now, earlier, the government of India had two budgets, railway budget and a general budget separate. It was separated in 1921 on the recommendations of the Atli committee. But from 2016 onwards, Modi government merged the railway budget to the general budget and scrapped the 92 year old practices. Basically, this government was of this viewpoint to scrap the age old colonial practices and free India from those practices. So, this was a step taken in that regard, one of the steps taken in that regard. Now, budget estimates what have the estimates come out to be? Total receipts 32.07 lakh rupees, uh, uh, lakh crore rupees. Total expenditure 48.2 lakh crore. Obviously, the expenditure is more than the total receipts. So, there is a deficit. Net tax receipts 25.83 lakh crore, all taxes direct, indirect. So, it is like this. Fiscal deficit estimated at 4.9% of the GDP, which should be according to the FRBM Act, 3% of the GDP. Borrowings gross 14.01 lakh crore, net 11.63 lakh crore. Net means some borrowings we have repaid also or some borrowings we have given to others. We have given loans to other people. So, that comes out to be in net gross how much we have borrowed is 14.01 lakh crore rupees and out of this 14.01 lakh crore roughly 2.5 to 3 lakh crore rupees we have given as loans. That is why from 14.01 that to 2.5 whatever the figure is if we reduce it comes out to be 11.63 lakh crore that is the net borrowings. Now overview of this budget, 
if i talk about the economic context of this budget this budget was investment friendly this budget was employment generation friendly so let us look at it despite global uncertainties india remains a stand out in economic growth 6.5 percent around about the indian economy is growing and no other economy in the world is growing at this pace no other large economy and there are a lot of global uncertainties all across the world despite that this growth is there so inflation is stable and moving towards the target of four percent the target of inflation is four plus minus two percent as set by the rbi which makes the inflation to two to six percent bracket inflation should be there in this bracket so that is moving towards four percent it is somewhere around five percent now so inflation is under control interim budget recap focus remains on garib that is poor mahilai women yuva that is youth and annadata that is farmers as outlined in the interim budget so here also you will focus on these four categories now the theme of the budget emphasizes employment skilling msmes and middle class welfare aims to enhance productivity and resilience across various sectors so this has been the hallmark of the modi government that you know it focuses upon skill development it focuses upon industrial development it believes less in distributing doles or freebies and actually focus should be on increasing productivity not on increasing freebies we are at such a juncture right now our economy that if we go for distributing freebies that will lead to unnecessary inflation this can hamper economic growth and if economic growth is hampered we won't be there by 2047 the dream which has been seen by the indian prime minister of making india a developed country now the budget priorities there are nine key areas where or nine key priorities which were outlined in this first productivity and resilience in agriculture annadata employment and skilling youth as well as women mahila inclusive human resource development and social justice again mahila over here manufacturing and services these two sectors have to be looked into urban development obviously urban areas in the country are increasing as well as the urban population is increasing and many problems are there in the urban areas like urban flooding improper sanitation unavailability of healthcare services or uh, i would say improper infrastructure yesterday i was seeing a photo of uh, a upsc aspirant who was living there in the patel nagar area and a very unfortunate incident that aspirant died due to electrocution walking on the road and you know water logging was there again and and this is basically an example of urban flooding or improper sanitation or i would say improper drainage system urban development we need to focus upon energy security which has been on the card since very long infrastructure development this government's push on infrastructure development has always been there innovation research and development this is something which is pleasing to the eyes that you know the government is focusing or telling to focus upon this particular sector there is more allocation of resources for this sector which was highly highly needed next generation reforms like you know we we are talking about uh, reforms in the space sector and all productivity and resilience in agriculture so introduction of 109 high yielding and climate resilient crop varieties climate change definitely impacts a lot our agriculture systems heat waves are there the crop failure is there so those are climate resilient crop varieties will be introduced and high yielding varieties will be there of those seeds promotion of natural farming for one crore farmers natural farming is where they do not use you know synthetic fertilizers or anything from the outside of the farm this is one notch above the organic farming so we want to bring them establishment of 10000 bio input resource centers focus on self sufficiency in pulses and oil seeds the two crops which we are import dependent right now so we need to focus on these roll out of digital public infrastructure in agriculture like digitalized land records and all there was a question this year also asked on digitalization of land records we covered few on the last year basically so this is the 
employment and skilling launch of schemes under pms package for employment and skilling creation of five schemes for youth employment yuva with a 2 lakh crore outlay enhancement of skilling to new schemes and revision of model skill loan scheme so for employment generation a specific or a special focus has been given then inclusive human resource development and social justice expansion of schemes for artisans self help groups scst entrepreneurs and street vendors like PM Swanidhi is there for street vendors. Launch of Purvodya Yojana for development of eastern states and Pradhan Mantri Danjati Unnat Gram Abhiyan for tribal communities. So, as I said, that special package has been given for Bihar and all. That is Purvodya. So, that is covered over here. Manufacturing and services. For support for MSMEs has been there announced through finance, financing and credit enhancement measures. Expansion of Mudra loans. So Mudra loans was given for entrepreneurs, those who wanted to start their, start their entrepreneurial journey. So there were three types of loans given. One was the Shishu loan, which was up to 50,000 rupees. Second was the Kishore loan from 50,000 to 5 lakh loan was given in this. And the third was the Tarun loan. Here, 5 lakh. To 10 lakh. Now, in this Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana, the limit has been increased from 10 lakh to 20 lakh. Or the structuring of all these will be obviously done. Yeah, but maximum limit was 10 lakh. It has now been announced that it will be 20 lakh. Let us see what kind of restructuring is done. Okay. Launch of internship schemes and top companies for the youth. You get internship. And you get paid by the government for 5,000 rupees per month and 6,000 rupees upfront cost. That is basically a boost for employment generation, especially for the youth. Urban development, PM Avas Yojana Urban 2.0, where you know cheap housing is being provided to you, and that was highly needed. And one crore urban poors and middle class families will be targeted here. Promotion of water supply, sanitation, and street food hubs under PM Swanidhi. This has to be done. One of the street vendors, Atmanirbhar Nidhi, is focusing on welfare of the street vendors. Energy security, launch of PM Surya Ghar Muft Bijli Yojana, which was basically announced by the government or the Prime Minister on the day when the Ram Mandir Temple was inaugurated. Emphasis on nuclear energy for a sustainable energy mix. Infrastructure allocation of 11 lakh 11,111 crore rupees for capital expenditure over the next year. Expansion of Pradhan Mantri Gramin Sadak Yojana and support for irrigation and flood management projects. This has to be done. Obviously, you know, problems are there. Innovation, research and development. Establishment of Anusandhan National Research Fund and Venture Capital Fund for Space Economy. Promotion of private sector driven research and innovation. And last, the ninth priority or the ninth area is next generation reforms. Economic policy framework for sustainable growth. This is important. Simplification of FDI and overseas investments in regulations. An introduction of NPS Vatsalya. NPS Vatsalya is new for uh, the National Pension Scheme Vatsalya for the parents so that they can invest for their child's better future. And they have to put in funds in this particular NPS or this particular scheme until the child turns 18 years of age. So, this is for them and reforms in the new pension scheme have also been announced. What are the reforms in the new pension scheme? Earlier, the private uh, employers had to contribute up to 10% in the NPS fund. Now, that limit has been raised to 14% for ensuring better social security of the employees. So, this is how it is. Then, there have been reforms in taxation. So, taxation reforms and economic policies, direct taxation means which uh, like income tax, corporate tax, which the, you know, uh, person has to pay to the government and it is dependent upon your income. It is not passed on from one to the other. The union budget 2024-25 aims to simplify and rationalize direct taxes, reducing compliance burdens and broadening tax nets. It increased the standard deduction for salaried employees opting for the new tax regime from 50,000 to 75,000. So, what is this deduction? Let's suppose my salary is 
20 lakh rupees i'm a salaried employee and my salary is 20 lakh rupees and i have to pay income tax on my salary because i'm there in the tax bracket so my salary and if i'm adopting this new tax regime earlier there were deductions of 50000 rupees means my salary was not considered as 20 lakh it was considered as 19.5 lakh and the taxable income was 19.5 lakh because there are standard deductions given by the government now that standard deduction has increased from 50000 to 75000 rupees now my taxable income will be 19.25 lakh rupees 75000 from 20 lakh rupees will be deducted so if the deductions increase the taxable income reduces which is a benefit or tax saving for us Similarly, the deduction on family pensions for pensioners was enhanced from 15,000 rupees to 25,000 rupees. One who, are, who is receiving pensions, those people have also, you know, to file income tax because that is an income for them. And for them also, the standard deduction has increased from 15,000 to 25,000. Assessments can now be reopened up to five years for incomes exceeding 50 lakh rupees. So let's suppose there is an individual whose income is exceeding 50 lakh rupees. And that person has not filed proper taxes three years ago. So, government can open that up to five years ago and send notices to those persons. Ki, Hello, you did not file tax properly three years ago or four years ago. Up to maximum five years ago, you can come and file. So, this kind of you know, things are there. But yes, condition is that that income of that person should be more than 50 lakh rupees. For them only it has been extended to five years. Corporate and personal income tax, over 58% of corporate tax receipts in the previous fiscal came from a simplified tax regime. The majority of individual taxpayers have shifted to the new personal income tax regime, appreciating its streamlined approach without exemptions and deductions. So, they are moving towards more simplified tax regime. Entrepreneurships and startups, the budget abolishes angel tax. So, there were angel investors who came as angels and invested in no, the startups, but those investors had to pay certain taxes. Now, those tax, angel tax has been removed, which is a good news for the investors. They are happy about it because we, the government is looking to boost startup investment. It introduced a simpler tax regime for foreign shipping companies operating domestic cruises and reduced corporate tax rate for foreign companies from 40% to 35% aiming to attract more foreign capital in the country. So, in aiming to increase more investments, all these things are being focused by the government. Indirect taxes and GST. The budget proposed comprehensive rationalization of GST and you know, to improve tax base. The government wants to bring more and more people under the ambit of GST. So, the government wants to rationalize it. Custom duty rates were also reviewed to ease trade and reduce disputes. The government plans to further digitalize customs and income tax services. So custom duties or custom duty adjustments have been there done on certain things. The budget fully exempted the three cancer treating medicines from custom duties, which is good news. Apart from these three cancer treating medicines, basic custom duty on X-ray machines, mobile phones, components like PCAB, is printed circuit board assembly PCBA sorry and mobile chargers was reduced BCD that is basic custom duty on critical minerals like lithium was fully exempted lithium is used for making manufacturing batteries let's not forget that we are entering into the era of EVs import duties on gold silver platinum and specific industrial goods were also lowered so lowering of basic custom duties simply means lowering their prices in the market then capital gains tax so let's suppose you're owning a property and after 10 years that property appreciates you bought that property for 10 lakh rupees now that property is worth 20 lakh rupees let's suppose so once you sell that property you gain on your capital investment 10 lakh rupees you gained and you have to pay taxes to the government on that gain that is called as capital gains tax the budget revised the capital gains tax structure to provide relief to the lower and middle income classes. Short term gains on financial assets now attract 20% tax rates, while long term gains on all assets will be taxed at 12.5%. So, 
the exemption limit for a capital gains was raised to 1.25 lakh per year benefiting a segment of taxpayers dispute resolution a new scheme vivad se vishwas this was introduced to resolve pending income tax disputes monetary limits for appeals related to direct taxes excise and service taxes in higher courts were increased aiming to reduce litigation and provide certain certainty in tax matters so dispute resolution scheme that also there disputes with respect to the taxes now a new tax slab was also introduced by the government now earlier this is basically the old tax regime 0 to 2.5 lakh rupees nil taxes 2.5 to 5 5% 5 to 10 lakh 20% above 10 lakh 30 here the new tax regime which was introduced by the government earlier 0 0.2.5 lakh nil 2.5 to 5 lakh 5% 5 to 7.5 lakh 10% 7.5 to 10 lakh 15% 10 to 12.5 lakh 20% 12.5 to 15 lakh 25% and above 15 lakh 30%. Another revised of this new tax regime has been proposed yesterday. Here 0 to 3 lakh nil. It was 0 to 2.5 lakh over here. But if you are earning up to 3 lakh rupees, income tax has to be filed. 3 to 6 lakh rupees 5%. 6 to 9 lakh rupees 10%. 9 to 12 lakh 15%. 12 to 15 lakh 20 percent above 15 lakh 30 percent so this has been the changes in the tax slab not tax regime tax regime was changed earlier this was this happened uh you know uh, two years ago i think i guess but in the new tax regime a new tax slab has been introduced so it is like this. so to conclude it it basically this entire budget if you see you will see focus upon employment generation you will see focus upon the youth you will see focus upon women social justice new age technology research and development all these things are needed presently in the country and this budget outlay is only till march 2025 let's see what changes the government does in march 2025 in its budget but yes it is very very important to know about these things and to know the allocations by the government in these sectors. Now, the MCQs consider the following statements and mark the correct one. Assertion that is A statement the railway and general budget were merged in 2016. Reasoning the government wanted to give up on certain colonial practices. Both A and R are correct. R is the correct explanation of A. Both A and R are correct, and R is not the correct explanation of A. A is true, R is false, A is false, R is true. So, you have to answer this question. Which of these statements do you think is correct? The mudra loan is a loan for which category of people? Street vendors, entrepreneurs, artisans, none of the above. Very simple, direct question. Which of the following is one among the nine priority areas outlined in the budget 2024-25? We studied about nine priority areas. If you remember them, this becomes simple for you. Space sector uh, development, manufacturing and services, resilience in agriculture, employment and skilling. Fourth, the NPS Vatsalya scheme introduced in budget 2024-25 aims to target the youth between 20 to 30 years of age, the newly married women, the children below 18 years of age, already none of the above. Again, very simple question, direct question. Last question, Vivad Se Vishwastak scheme aims at resolving disputes between the states of India. Resolving disputes between center and states with respect to tax allocation. Resolving direct and indirect tax disputes or none of the above. Now, the MCQs of 23rd July, that is yesterday. Which of the following dignitaries have immunity under Article 361? So, we discussed clearly that governor of state and president has immunity. So, these two are the correct. The foreign diplomats have immunity according to the Geneva Convention. Okay. So, B is going to be the correct answer for this particular question. Second, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. First, no criminal proceedings whatsoever shall be instituted or continued against a governor in office. This is true. A governor cannot be arrested for any crime committed during his tenure as a governor. This is also true. Both 1 and 2 are correct. The Vyapam scam is related to which state of India? Very simple it was. It is Madhya Pradesh. That is. The answer is there. Fourth, 
consider the following statements and mark the correct one. The union budget is presented only once in a year, always. No. In election years, they are presented twice in a year. The union budget entails provisions with respect to subsidies borne by the government. Yes, this statement is true. And hence, B is the correct answer for this particular question. And the last question, which was tricky. If the government reduces or completely absolves taxes on businesses, it can lead to which of the following? Reduce tax earnings for the government. Definitely, it can lead to reduced tax earnings. See, the statement given in our notes was, it does not necessarily mean that it will lead to reduced tax earnings. It can lead to increased tax earnings also for the government. So, reduced tax earnings is also a possibility. Increased tax earnings is also a possibility. So, that is why reduced tax earnings is correct. More employment generation. Obviously, if it leads to more savings with the businesses because taxes are reduced or absolved, definitely investment will lead to more employment generation. More investment, obviously. Third. So, all three are there. It can lead to all the three. So, it is like this. The word was can over here. Definitely was not the word. So, all the three are correct. With this, we come to an end of today's session. I will be seeing you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. Not repeating it today. Namaste. Jai Hind.